Trump's thing was too small, so he fired the guy responsible for making it bigger. I'm speaking, of course, about his rally in Phoenix. The Phoenix rally, he tweeted about it afterwards. I don't know if you saw this tweet where he said, thank you, Arizona, beautiful turnout of 15,000 in Phoenix tonight, full coverage of my rally via Facebook at whatever. And if you watch that video, he says there's a lot of people in here. I want the fire marshals to let the ones who are trapped outside in. Well, it turned out um, it wasn't as big an event as he kind of let on. We have a video that emerged from that event. Let's see if we can take a look. So as you see, as it pans to the side, there aren't that many people. As many folks as he wanted to put behind him on stage in different positions, and as much noise as they could generate from putting microphones near the folks who were there, it wasn't nearly as big as he let on. There was a spokesperson from the city of Phoenix who said, uh, maybe somewhere around the 10,000 person range, uh, where 4,500 to 5,000 were turned away as it was because they got there when it was wrapping up. Another on site report says that there were about 4,000 people inside. And this made Trump very upset. And so he turned his aggression on uh, the person who's in charge of organizing those events, uh, the director of scheduling in advance, George Gigakos. Um, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but he, according to reports, will never manage a Trump rally again. And reports from CNN say that Trump was irate and chewed him the hell out. Because it was his fault that the crowd size wasn't as large as he would have liked. Yep, that's it. I mean, there's more reports about what actually happened on the inside. New York Magazine reports, hundreds left early while others plopped down on the ground, scrolled through their social media feeds or started up a conversation with their neighbors after waiting for hours in 107 degree heat to get into the rally hall where their water bottles were confiscated by security. People were tired and dehydrated and the president just wasn't keeping their attention. Wow, that yeah. is incredible. Look, we just had an election. Right, it hasn't even been a year since the election took place. And he's already having rallies. And mind you, he had that rally soon after the disaster in Charlottesville, Virginia. And, and that rally also included his speech where he was incredibly defensive over defending the neo Nazis, uh, saying that some of them are good people. Just stop, just stop. There are nominations that he needs to make in order to fill positions in the White House, among White House agencies. Um, there are so many issues right now that he should be focusing on. And instead, he's having a rally as if it's election season. We've already gone through that trauma. Give us a little bit of a breather and actually focus on doing your job for once. I can't believe he fired this guy. It's not this guy's fault that you're starting to lose support. You are making enemies out of allies left and right. You're firing people left and right. It, there's infighting, there's leaking, there's nothing but chaos coming from the White House. I think. This guy who usually puts your campaign events together is the least of your problems. And he had been putting together events in the past, yeah. events that were better attended. Yeah. And so this is more, I guess, when faced with the decision, if you're Trump, of looking at yourself and criticizing yourself or blaming it on someone in middle management. That's the kind of thing that he does where he's shaking these trees. And it's crazy how many people I find out about, like whose names I find out about that I would never learn in a million years from other administrations because right. Trump just got mad at them because something that Trump himself seems to have caused has made news and rather than take responsibility on himself, he has decided to kick it down at George Gijikas. So it's, it's a human instinct to not wanna take the blame or the responsibility. Um, but it's a human instinct when you are young and immature. And I think even young people are more willing to take responsibility for their actions. Keep in mind that the Republican Party is supposed to be the party of taking personal responsibility. <laughs> They're the ones who will turn to people living in the most impoverished conditions imaginable and they'll be like, pick yourself up by the bootstraps, personal responsibility. What about you guys? What about your personal responsibility? What about your president's personal responsibility? That rally wasn't attended by the crowds that you wanted because you suck.
okay? You suck, you suck. Your approval ratings are at an all time low uh, because of you know your reaction to Charlottesville, Virginia. And then you're gonna turn around and blame other people for it? Take a look in the mirror. I know it's a scary sight, but just take a quick look in the mirror. And also just like the timeline of who he's blaming and for what. Amid all this, when people in the White House can hear his you know, chief of or whoever it is passing this judgment down to the advanced guy. Amid all this, Trump is still saying things like, you saw the massive crowd we had. He said this on Monday, we, you saw the massive crowd we had. People went crazy when I said, what did you think of Jer Sheriff Joe or something to that effect? So he's firing this guy for a small turnout, which yeah. we can see in a video on Snapchat or Twitter proven. Mm -hmm. But it, and he's fi he's firing a guy, not necessarily firing him. There's conflicting reports saying whether he resigned or whatever, but it's pretty clear that he's not happy with this guy. Amid all that, he's still saying we had a massive turnout of this event because he's pathetic. He's he's the guy with the small penis who constantly feels the need to talk about how big his penis is. Yep, or he right? just buys a big truck, has a big every one of his buildings just looks like a giant golden phallus. <laughs> I think. It keeps happening because no one has done exactly what Anna said was, you suck. This is your fault. Mm -hmm. He's failed all these businesses, it's very well documented. He screwed this over, he didn't get that deal done. But after all that fail, failure happens, someone still goes, hey, we'll give you another chance. Hey, go edit this one. Hey, let me give you some more money. Hey, we'll put your name on this. And it keeps happening. So he continued, he get, he gets to continue to say, I'm awesome no matter how much I fail because people keep giving me another chance. Yep. And that's what we're doing even with him as president. Nobody in that room is saying, hey, Mr. Trump, you're um, getting rid of this guy who has nothing to do with your approval ratings or how many people showed up. You just suck. Because if you do, you're getting fired. You're but getting fired, exactly. But isn't it also weird that like the right thing to do, according to so many in this situation, when you do agree, when you do disagree with Trump, is to resign? Yeah. Creating more space in the White House to be filled with lackeys and yes men. I don't know about that. That was the one thing when the Elon Musk was first called out for being on advisory committees, various like Silicon Valley entrepreneurs. They said, you need to get off of this advisory committee. And the answer, I, I don't know. I'm so conflicted. I do, in I that. do know. And it's because being on his advisory committee means absolutely nothing. He has no interest in hearing from people who want to challenge his ideas. Um, he wants to do away with people who are going to challenge him. He wants people yeah. to stroke his ego and make him feel good about himself. And what he fails to realize is as he continues to surround himself with individuals who refuse to challenge him, and as he continues to do things that are unpopular and damaging, his approval rating will continue to dip. And he tries to over compensate by claiming that everyone loves him. And what actually amazes me more than anything is that some of his supporters found pictures of other crowds and pretended as, a, as though that was the crowd that attended the rally in Arizona. What is wrong with you people? Like you're lying to yourself. That's crazy. I also like the way Trump talks about the event. He's like, Gigi Kosin staged the event. I mean, this is, it says Trump, according to this New York Magazine article, says Trump was criticizing it, saying the, uh, this event was staged in a large multi purpose room. The main floor space was bisected by a dividing wall, leaving part of the space empty. Uh, there were some bleachers off to the side, but otherwise the audience was standing and the scene appeared flat, lacking energy and enthusiasm in other rallies. I mean, if this is properly attributed to Trump, um, maybe he should organize all the events. Yeah, for real. We'll take down a wall over here. We'll bring in the biggest bleachers you've ever seen. Maybe that's his calling, <laughs> is to set up like furniture for his rallies. Maybe. I think that'd be a good idea. Help us build independent media together. Come join us, tytnetwork.com slash join.